All right, say one day I'm walking down the street minding my own business, when all of a sudden I develop this horrible chest pain. I'm not sure what it is, but I know it feels bad, so I pick up my cell phone and I call 911. Soon, an ambulance arrives to take me to the closest emergency room. And when I get there, I'm greeted by a triage nurse, and she gathers some basic information from me, namely my chief complaint, my vital signs, my age, and a short description of the story. She records all this information on a triage sheet, or nowadays, in the computer, and then has a difficult job of deciding whether I can go to the waiting room with everyone else, or I need to be brought back right away to a room. She decides that I should probably come back right away. You happen to be working in the emergency room that day and pick up my chart. Looking at the chief complaint and vital signs, you ask yourself, well, what can kill this guy with this chief complaint and these vital signs? And so you immediately form your killer differential. Actually, you had this differential in mind way before you saw me. You decided long ago that every person who comes in with chest pain, you're going to be worrying about a couple of bad things, including acute coronary syndromes, pulmonary embolus, thoracic aortic dissection, tension pneumothorax, and esophageal ruptures. There's actually a lot more than five things that could kill someone with chest pain, but for the sake of this example, let's limit it to these. So the first thing you should do in all patients in the emergency room is have a differential in mind, which inclu includes all the life threats. And this differential is based on the chief complaint. You can do this while you're walking towards the patient's room. And now you come to the patient's bedside, you look at the patient, does he look like he's going to die now if you don't do something? This is called the primary survey. And this is your ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. Now let me make a little note here. The 2010 ACLS guidelines stress that for adults, C should probably come first. Therefore, changing our ABC into CAB. Since establishing uh, good circulation is more likely to save more lives. In kids for now, it's still A, B, C. We'll go over in future videos how to assess these things in more detail, but for right now, it could be done by looking at the patient as well as looking at the vital signs. If I'm able to talk and move air in and out and control my secretions, and it doesn't look like my airway is going to get plugged up by a swelling tongue or vomit, then very likely my airway is okay. If my chest wall is moving up and down symmetrically, I'm not tachypnic or hypoxic, then very likely my breathing is okay. In this case, we can see actually that the pulse ox is 88%. So there may be something wrong with the breathing. So we make an immediate intervention. Maybe in this case, we'll play, apply two liters of nasal cannula oxygen and then reassess later. And if blood is perfusing all my organs, evidenced by the fact that I have a blood pressure, that I'm mentating well, that I'm not profoundly tachycardic or bradycardic or hypotensive, then my circulation is also likely okay. So your primary survey is a quick check to see if there's anything that's going to kill your patient in the next few minutes if you don't do something about it. If such a danger does exist, then take care of it, fix it. The other thing you should be doing from the get-go is what we like to call the initial actions. And this will be different for different patients. For a guy with a chemical exposure to his eye, you want to wash out his eyes immediately. For a woman of childbearing age, I'd like to get a pregnancy test immediately. And for someone coming in with chest pain, I'd like to get an EKG within the first five minutes and take a look at it. Additionally, anyone that you think might be sick, I'd do this. I'd put, them, put an IV in them, put them on some oxygen, and put them on a cardiac monitor. While these things are unlikely to harm anyone, they can be life-saving. So remember this mantra, IV O2 monitor, for anyone who might be sick. So go ahead and put me on an IV and the cardiac monitor. And you already put me on 2 liters of O2. So again, IV O2 monitor. Let's say at this point we reassessed and my pulse ox is now 96% on 2 liters. So at this point we've covered the first two steps of your uh, evaluation of the emergency department patient, and that is to first form a differential diagnosis that includes all the life threats, and really that should be done before you see the patient. But don't worry, we're going to refine this as we get more information. And then the second step is to do your primary survey and initial actions. That is, if there's something going to 
kill your patient, you better fix that now. In the next video, we'll look at history and the secondary survey.